<laughs> so Keen decided to splurge on one of these Insight 8080s and he's just going to build one up now, hopefully. And we'll be able to see his prowess at hand assembly and data entry into the 8080. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> So what's so special about the IMSI 8080? Well, here's a bit of a history lesson. This is the Modern Computer Show with your host, Michael Elstrom. I really don't think I miss the 70s. So the MSI 8080 was a pretty special machine, mainly because it was considered the very first clone computer, being sold in kit form around the mid-70s. It was a clone of the MITS Altair 8800 and ran a modified version of CPM on the Intel 8080 and later the 8085. At the time it was pretty cool. Actually, what am I saying? It's still pretty cool. The Intel 8080 was clocked at 2 MHz with 64K RAM available to the user. Of course, the inside of the unit was pretty packed and you programmed it using toggle switches on the front panel. If anyone watched the movie War Games in the 80s, you would have seen one of them in the background. It's essentially one of the most iconic microcomputers in the history of computing. So I published a video early in the year where a bunch of retro heads came out to meet Spencer Owen, who is the creator of the RC2014. It was a real show and tell event and you would have seen Dave McNaughton's IMSI 8080 replica. Since he's a teacher, he originally wanted to make one to teach people coding. This is a great idea as the best place to start coding is on RetroKit. I think it gives people a much better understanding of what's really going on in their code. So now he's moved on from prototype stage to kit form and you can pick up one of these from his website. And since he's an educator, he has come up with a bunch of videos on his YouTube channel going through the whole build process. Of course my mate Keen bought one, but I think I was probably more excited about it than he was. Hey Keen. Yeah. Hey Keen, you gotta open your MSI box. Yeah, very very soon. <laughs> come on. <laughs> I want to watch the video first. Oh, okay, right. Go read the instructions. No, I'm not going to do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> so every time my wife reads the JLC PCB ad script, I uh, change it slightly just to see if I can put her off. Okay, hit it. This video is being sponsored by JLC PCB, who provides Mick with all his PCBs. They can produce one to six layer boards from 0.4 to 2 millimeter thickness, via drill size down to 0.2 millimeters, track widths down to 3.5 mil, and can handle BGAs, controlled impedance, cutouts, gold fingers, and other weird things. You can currently get five PCBs for only $2 in any color, manufactured in 24 hours. But guess what? JLC PCB are now offering a PCB A service. That means you can not only order your PCBs, but get them populated with components, all in the comfort of your Jimmy Jams. Click on the link in the description below to check them out. Jimmy Jams. Isn't it Jimmy Jams? Mm. Mm. Well, I often work in my Jimmy Jams. Yes, you do. <laughs> so Keen's just going to read the instructions, which is something that I don't like doing personally. I like to sort of wing it. <laughs> but Keen's an avid instruction follower, aren't you Keen? No, normally, well, normally I'm making my own things, so oh, I'm yes, not following okay. other people's instructions. But True. if I'm spending good money on something, then I prefer to, yeah. prefer to do it per, per the instructions. But also I want to give feedback to Dave, because this is the first kit being assembled as far as I know. So mm. if I can provide some feedback for him, um, that'll help anybody else who comes after me. Excellent. So Keen. Yes. Why are you using that big chunky tip? Because uh, I just got this new K Sega soldering station and I thought I'd test it out. I normally use a, a Weller pencil 
iron, but I'm using this one and I haven't yet got the correct tips. So it's a bit chunky. Yeah. No worries. Bit of flux. So Keen, why is this taking so long? Because I'm trying to do it right. Oh, okay then. So what stage are you up to now? Uh, so I've just soldered in the ESP32 mm -hmm. and just plugged into USB to see whether it works. And apart from an error message on the screen there, which I think is fine, uh, seems to be booting. I'm not sure what it's supposed to do beyond that because I haven't watched that video yet. Soldered the minimal amount so far, so let's go to the next step. Hey Keen. Yep. Why are you still soldering? Because it takes time. <laughs> so how many LEDs have you got? Too many. Hey Keen. Yeah. You finished yet? No. <laughs> still got a million switches to do. A million switches? Not just about. He gave you a million switches. Uh uh. So what are you up to now? I'm doing the IC sockets. They're pretty easy and quick. Are you using good soldering techniques? I'm using my soldering techniques, which <laughs> have done me pretty well for the last 40 years. Excellent. So go on, Keen. Tell me what you did. I'm not telling you. <laughs> Ow. What did you do? I put it on the wrong side. Oh, is that all? Yeah. <laughs> I don't even say I mounted it on the wrong side of the PCB. Oh, okay, well, it's, it's an easy mistake to make. So what are we up to? Since uh, yesterday, because um, you were so tired after soldering. Who was tired? You. I kept going till 5 a.m., what are you talking about? <laughs> okay. We've got the switches, a few resistors. So the switches we don't want to solder in. I think the yeah. switches we can just insert and, and they'll work. But I actually want to go back and have a look at the build notes. Double check what order I'm supposed to do things. Kind of jumped ahead. So look at that, Should it I... works straight off the bat. I've just powered it up for the first time. And, and we see the 8080. And it sees, Seven. it's got some discs mounted, according to that. Oh, is it? Oh yeah, from the SD card. Look at that. Yeah, USB cable still playing up. Turn it off. LEDs. Look Turn it on. Uh, You're just guessing, aren't you? Now? I don't know how to use this thing. <laughs> so that's stepping. Oh yeah, it must be stepping. Uh, is there any default? Code. No, those aren't instructions. So did you get it right? Okay. Looks like it. Don't know what it's supposed to do this program. Oh, there. Uh, but all the switches so seem to be just... working. There's 16 bits. Yep. Some are reserved, which let you configure the simulation mode. Okay. So you can say whether you want it to be a Z80 or an 8080, the clock rate, what boot ROM it's using, and so forth. It's already set for all those settings. Yeah. I just added one extra toggle up bit three, which puts it into Wi-Fi station mode instead of access point mode. Mm -hmm. Now, if I reset the ESP, okay, and now I've got to wait for it to reconnect on Wi-Fi. It should connect to my Wi-Fi and I should get an alert from Thing. There's Thank a new you. device, which there is. I just got an alert from Thing. Yeah. Okay. Getting our power on. Right. 
So that you've got the ASP running in the back end, you're now powering on the front. And this is CPM running, you're running. It has to go into run mode. Right. And it's CPM. So what we have is the TTY device. The advantage of this over the CRT device is the TTY has scrollback history. CRT device is more of a memory mapped type device, whereas this is more of a serial console. You can also use one of the RS-232 ports on the back of the unit and redirect the serial to that if you want to use a more old school terminal. We can see the system information. Yep. And this whole desktop's running as a web interface, isn't it? Yes. So this is loading the web interface off the, off the, off the ASP. ESP. Yep. Okay, and you also have the front panel control here as well. Uh, you can't actually switch it on and off from here. Oh, you have yeah. to use the front panel for that. Right, but, but you, you can, can switch. Yeah, so you can switch into stop mode, for example. So now all the we're in, now we're yeah. in a wait state. Yeah. And if I toggle back into run mode, we'll see it goes back into run. And that doesn't actually reset the process or anything. So if I no, I can continue, it. yeah, just pauses it. Yeah. Whereas if I actually click on the uh, reset button yep. that will do a reset that's a, like a soft reset in CPM yep. or if I do an X clear that's like a hard reset Right. and once I'm in CPM I can go to my C drive which is the most important thing on here and <laughs> yeah. I can run Zork which is the most important benchmark you can ever have yes. on RetroKit and that's a good sign that everything's working because yeah. I've got through a few minutes of playing this without any problems. <laughs> I did have problems when I was running with the um, access point for Wi-Fi, but that's almost certainly my Wi-Fi dongle. So when you said you had problems, obviously you were uh, eaten by a groove. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> You've forgotten how to play, haven't you? Forgotten how to play. <laughs> so we can actually go into the system device. You can see here what the different disks that are mounted are, but you can also just hover over each of the drives and it will show you. And then you've got a virtual disk library here that you can actually see each of the disks. So for example, my D drive currently has a WordStar. Good so old Wordstar. I can eject that disk and then I can mount Zork 2. And then if we go back to the TTY device, and we go to D drive. Now we can run Zork 2. Even better. Excellent. And similarly, we've got a um, disk here for Zork 3. We've got a disk for doing the Dazzler, which is a very low res color graphics. D base 2. D base 2. <laughs> Fun memories of that. Uh, uh, Super yes. Calc, which is like a spreadsheet. Yes, Super Calc. Um, WordStar mm. and. Uh, Cyclops, which is the low resolution camera. The other main thing is the printing function. This is a particularly nice thing. That's your, the blue nice. bar that we have in Australia yeah. and we're kind of used to. The green yeah. bar, which is more of an American thing, and then the blank page. You can kind of relive nice. those memories. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's so nice. I think I might have to get one of these. Yes. And of course, if you really want to go retro, you can just not, not boot it into CPM. CPM and you can actually do everything using the front panel yeah. um, controls which we did the other day. So that's probably displaying address and data in real time. Although the address oh, bus isn't really moving around that no. much. Let me just try running Zork again. If I start Zork, you can see a lot more activity. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And if I quit Zork, back to the CPM command prompt, yeah, you can see. then you can see it's gone to that. You know, it's interesting the uh, address. It's not moving it's, around much. It's in a it's yeah, in a loop. It's probably jumping into interrupt interrupts and. It's probably just in a polling loop, polling yeah. the serial port or something. And you can see probably the serial port code is high up in the address space or something. Yeah, so that's your high bits of your address, and that's your yeah. low bits. Um, that's your actual data bus. Yeah. That's just the status registers. So. Nice. No, so good. He's done a really good job of it. Oh yeah, it looks really nice. This is the first one in the world that was assembled apart from his own, so I'm quite pleased to have that opportunity, and it's come together really well. Where can you uh, pick these up? If you go to the highnibble.com website yep. and click on the IMSI 8080 replica, you and there's it. an email address, you can send him an email if you are interested. I won't state the pricing, because I <laughs> don't know if that's subject to change. But anyway, yeah, highnibble with an I, not a Y. Yes. <laughs> the highnibble.com. So one of the goals of this channel is to support makers. So if you have a maker product that you want me to show off, then shoot me an email at this address. Note that I'll only promote something that the creator is genuinely excited about and is something they are actively working on. I don't have the time or inclination to promote something that is vaporware. So thanks for watching this trip down memory lane. See you next week.
Hey, Kane. Yeah. So, Kane. Yes. So, Kane, why is this taking so long? Because I'm trying to do it right. Hey, Kane. Yeah. Why are you still soldering? Hey, Kane. Yeah. So, go on, Kane. Tell me what you did. I'm not telling you. <laughs>